What's good everyone, welcome back to a new video and today we're going to be making some crocs inside of Blender. So yeah, here's the final render, this is what it looked like, they came out pretty good. And um, it didn't take me too long to make them, so without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so first things first, as usual, you want to delete everything, the whole default scene. And then we're going to bring in our reference images, by the way, link in the description if you want to get them. Now you can just drag and drop these in, pretty simply. Alright, so to make sure that all the reference images are aligned into the right scale, you want to bring in an object or something that you're going to use to keep everything to the same scale basically. So we're going to start with the cube, so shift A, add in the cube and then scale it along the X, just to be the right size. And then go down here to this yellow panel and then go to viewport display, display as and select wire so you can kind of see through it. And basically I'm just going to make sure all these reference images fit inside this box. This will ensure that they're all at the same scale. When I come to like switching from front view to top view, they're all at the exact same scale. Alright, so let's start with the plane. So shift A, mesh, and then click plane. You can see it down there. And then let's rotate on the x-axis. So RX 90. And then let's bring it up here and S to scale it down a little bit. By the way, if you're watching the bottom left, you can kind of see what I'm doing over there. So we're gonna move it over here a little bit. I didn't realize my recording crashed earlier till I finished afterwards and I was editing. And I realized it's all chopping stuff, so I have to record all of this again. But anyways, select these two edges there. And you can either press E to extrude like this one by one, or you can select them and then control left click to extrude, which is a lot faster in my opinion. But you can do it either way, it's up to you really. Now all you gotta do it's kind of just make sure all of these lines are lined up with the reference image. So press Alt Z to enter X ray mode so you can see through. And then if you double click G, it allows you to slide the vertex down. If you press G once, you can move it about like this. If you press it twice, you can only move it along the lines. So go around and then just make sure everything's lined up. It's like so. Take your time with this as well. So I'm just double pressing G and just sliding the vertices down. To the same for the down here, make sure it's all lined up. Let's move that up a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, I need a new laptop to be honest. Mine's like a whole potato. I'll just add in a loop cut right there. Control R to add the loop cut, by the way. Spring this up a little bit. Okay, looks pretty good. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. Alright, so now let's go into the top view. You can click seven to get you there. And we're just gonna align, actually move this down a little bit real quick. But you have to redo this all over again, it isn't really fun, but let's just get into it. So yeah, top view, and then we're just gonna move these vertices down and keep it aligned to the reference image. So turn on proportion editing, which is there on the top. It kind of just lets you affect other sides of the same mesh, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of allows you to move things in a group, if that makes sense. So press G and let's move it along the Y axis to kind of line up with the reference image. And I'm gonna just go around and just do this real quick. So you can skip this part. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit for you actually. What we're gonna do is make sure all of these verses are actually straight. So the whole leaning in a little bit. So to that I'm gonna select it, double press R, and I can rotate it freely. So if you press R once, you can only rotate along a certain axis, so like the Y or the X or Z. But if you double press it, you can rotate it freely. So I'm just going to go around and make sure they're all straight and kind of facing the right way. Let's just go around real quick, make sure they're all aligned. Again, double press R and just line it up. By the way, if you guys need any help doing this whole tutorial, if there's something you don't understand that's not clear, um, follow me on Instagram and just send me a DM. I'll try to help you out. So I'm just, just going to go around and just straighten everything. This will just make our life much easier later on. So might as well do it right now. Let's go around. And you can take as little as much time as you want with this step. You can make as perfect as you want. It's really up to you. 
I don't even have patience right now since I did this yesterday and I'm doing it all over again. But all you're doing is just making sure things are all lined up properly. Like so. There we go. I'm going to add one more loop cut right here. Again, that's Control R to add the loop cut. And if I go in the front view, there it is. And let's go into the top view, pressing 7. And then let's just move this along the X a little bit, kind of just align it from the top. So you need to make sure it's aligned on all angles pretty much. Mainly the front and the top. For now at least. So let's do a little bit. Let's add another loop cut there. Control R. Let's move this down a little bit. Looks pretty good. There we go. Let's just fix this front. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's just select all of it. Move it up on the Z axis. And then these two can come a little bit forward. Come down a little bit. There we go. Now we've got one side done. We need to do the exact same thing for the other side. So we can't mirror it because obviously they're not the same. So we can just select one of the edges that we just made. And all we're going to do is just extrude around it, just like earlier. So select and control left click and follow the reference image. So just go all the way around, like so. There you go. that's not too bad and then let's just join these two edges here so click one vertex and then click the other one and then press m to merge them and then last when you click at last it's going to join the vertex to the last one that you clicked when it's first it's going to join to the first vertex that you click so let me show you what i mean by that so if i click at last you can see it joins to the last one that i clicked but if i would click at first then the last the other one would join to this one i hope that makes sense Be so at last or at first, just depends on which one you select first. So let's just join them. M at last. Now what we're going to do is make sure this side is aligned with the other side. So let's exit into object mode. Go back into front view by pressing 1. And then you can either move it up and align it using the reference image, kind of like that. Through the front view. Or you can go top view by pressing 7. So yeah, select one half of it. Make sure... You click OZ so you in X-ray mode so that you can select through the model rather than just selecting the top vertices. Or you can click this icon over there, which is X-ray mode. So select one side, plus H to hide it, and go into front of you. And then now you only see the back side. Hopefully this will make it a bit easier. And then just do the same thing we did earlier and just align it up using the reference image. So yeah, I'm gonna try to bring you guys more tutorials. Um, I wasn't actually expecting for my last video to do so well the um, Air Force One video. There's quite a lot of people that hit me up on Instagram asking me to make like a proper tutorial because obviously that video was more like a time lapse. So if you guys want more of this type of videos, obviously subscribe, leave a comment. And um, yeah, I'm trying to keep this channel mainly like sneaker focused because I haven't really seen many people do that in 3D. So anyways, just keep lining this up, make sure it's all lined up properly. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, just get it close enough bring this down a little bit there we go I'm looking fresher because I'm have to do this all over again but anyways it doesn't really matter gonna move this down anyways let's press alt H to bring back the side that we that was hidden so H to hide and one hide so let's go top view and then this a couple needs to be straight and a little bit so like we did earlier, select it, then double click R, and then just rotate it to the straight. So you see how it's slanted towards one side? We don't want that, so select all of it, double R, and then make sure it's aligned. Hope that makes sense. But yeah, there you go. But yeah, this will make our life much easier later on, so. Let's add a loop cut in here, control R again. The cleaner your topology, the better the model will be, so. The easy will be also to add textures because you don't have to worry about so many faces. So try to keep as low poly as you can. That's what I'm doing over here. Try to keep it low poly. So there we go. Let me just bring this down a little bit. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, just hit me up on Instagram. I'll try to help you out. Hopefully. <laughs> 
go just retouching a little bit again it's up to you if you want to go to this amount of detail but so now let's kind of rough looking right now so we're gonna add a subdivision modifier to make it smooth a little bit so go into little wrench icon that's the modifier panel click on that add a modifier and then click subdivision surface you can see it makes it smoother just a little bit now obviously for me in my case all i have to press is control number one because that's my shortcut so to add the shortcut all you have to do is go into the modifiers panel go to subdivision surface right click on it shortcuts or assign shortcuts and then just click whatever key you want in my case control one so now whenever i want to add a subdivision modifier to any object i just select it press control one and there we go so do that and then press w shade smooth to smoothen out there we go again it still has the same topology as earlier you can see it's still low poly but it's a lot smoother now so yeah, we've got this now if you can see the roughest image is like this little bump on the back here as you can see it's not just flat it kind of goes out it's a bit bumpy comes back in and it goes back out it's kind of thick in the middle so we're going to try and recreate that so the way we're going to do that is adding well hold up so let me just fix this a little bit let's add in a loop cut Control r and then let's bring this up a little bit down here there we go perfect so yeah, the way we're going to do that is adding a loop cut so let's press Control r you can see this yellow line over here that's a loop cut what it does is just adds more vertices kind of just gives you more points to move about pretty much so it's lining up with the reference image trying to get as close as you can again doesn't need to be perfect but let's just start up and also you can move the vertices up so select them double press g and just slide them up so you can just do it manually real quick kind of clean it up <clears throat> excuse me that's okay there we go now you can see over here it's kind of like clipping a little bit so you can just turn off the subdivision and, and you can see the vertices a bit better so select all of this alt right click or left click i've been using right click as like i started using blender back in 2.79 i think so i'm used to using right click it might be left click for you but anyways select the whole edge right there by pressing alt click and then you're just going to add a bevel to it so your control b gets it bigger and smaller and then if you move your mouse wheel it will add more or less vertices in between basically more or less you could say loop cuts so let's just add one so you have three lines and there we go that looks pretty good and then now let's go to face select mode you can either choose from one of those three up there or you can press through on your number pad and alt right click to select the whole row on the top select both the top row and the bottom row as well as you can see and the scale on everything except the z-axis so press s shift z for that and then hold down shift to get a bit more accurate just get about there just a little bit just enough so it's noticeable and then you can see that little line there just about that much is all right looks pretty good all right so that's the end of part one i didn't want to make this too long so if you want to see part two just click the video on the screen right now or go to the description down below and um yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in part two